Hey, you! Yes, you. Are you bored and uninspired by your whiskey glasses? Then why not try these glasses? With the help of new whiskey vision technology, these functional yet fashionable specs will allow you to watch your favorite whiskey tubers anywhere. On the televisual box. In the mirror. Or even your favorite picture. So go on. Pick up your whiskey glasses today and say cheers to an experience you won't believe or find necessary. Warning, may induce vomiting and erectile dysfunction. Do not use while driving. Hello, welcome to another whiskey review with me, the Whiskey Novice. It's a rather slow-moving Whiskey Novice this week. Why, you may ask. Well, it's the heat, isn't it? It would appear uh, if I move at any speed or at all for that matter, I just break out in a sweat. I think it's pretty much the same all over Europe at the moment, so uh, certainly my friends in Europe will understand. Yes, review number 52, part 12 of my series of Baker's Dozen, look at 13, 12 year old Scottish single malts. So we're drawing very, very close to the end of this series and a series that I've enjoyed muchly, but we'll get to that at the end. And we're looking this time at uh, an old favorite, Old Pulteney. 12 year old from uh, just outside Wick there. Indeed, this was the uh, most northerly mainland distillery in Scotland for years, but that's an accolade now owned by Wolfburn Distillery. And uh, this 12 year old expression, bottled at 40%, color added, chill filtered. Uh, mostly, they, they generally tend to mature mostly in uh, ex-bourbon casks and and then that maturation, for the most part, is on-site in Dunnage warehouses at Old Pulteney. So there you go, there's a little info for you, little tidbit. Cheers. This is, I said at the start, this is an old favourite. This is an old favourite of mine. This is one of my early days. Soft, sweet fruit. It's quite gentle. Peach. When it said soft, sweet fruit, peach, mandarin, orange. Gentle and pleasant, but still with enough body in the nose to, to hold it together. Now, brain. Let's get to the subject of brine. There is a brininess here. There is a, a, a sea salty nose or hint in the nose, but maybe not as much as it sometimes gets, to me anyway, sometimes gets played up. The distillery tends to play in this with a wee bit about the saltiness and the brininess and what it brings in with the with being stored by the sea, etc. Yes, there's a brininess there, but it's not massive. It, 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 it sits in along with everything else quite well. Apple and cinnamon, but not, not like an apple pie, not like as if this is a, a something that's been baked, etc. That's two very separate noses there. There's two different hints, apple and cinnamon. There is, that brine actually probably plays a wee bit more like salted caramel. It is like a salted caramel. Some floral notes, like fresh, just like fresh, fresh flowers. And then and around, all the time, more fruit, apricot. Maybe overripe pear and the saltiness. So it all does work together. Taste wise, very light, very thin, slightly sweet and sour delivery. It washes through very, very quickly. Mm. Very thin. More becomes more cereal. 
more sealy note with maybe a hint of a slightly bitter dark chocolate. A lot of those fruity notes that were on the nose give way quite quickly for me. It becomes more of a, a muted woody note. Quite hot, quite peppery. Very quick on the palate. And then you get into quite a quick short finish as well. Yet again, finish peppery, white pepper. quite hot. Now, it's a classic, yes. It's a modern classic even. This is the slightly older bottling, which came in the, the sort of funky, plasticky tube of a thing. Uh, it was uh, not necessarily rebranded, just repackaged in the last few years. They've all, for quite a while, they've had this funky still shaped bottle, which I like. But as I said, it's a bit of a modern classic. It's one of those that, uh, I think almost all of us, I would imagine, have had a go at it at some point. They do seem to sell quite a lot of the of the twelve year old. It, it it's sells for this can be down in the budget range almost selling for. You, you know, down and around the £25 mark, but I've seen it going up to the £40 mark. It's a good starting point, I would imagine. I would say it's a good starting point, I would imagine. So I've added a little water there. Now it's 40%. I did, I said a couple of things. 40% and thin on the palate. Why would I even consider adding water? Well, I do with, I do with all of them. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It, what it actually does in this is it turns the fruit up again certainly on the nose because I said a review a couple of reviews ago I'm not quite sure when it was that, that I find a balancing point somewhere between the nose and the palate where the nose tends to come down the palate comes up and there's a point somewhere in the middle where the, the, the whiskey balances itself out and this as I said, this was actually doing that where there was a lot of, for me, cereal notes and, and different things starting to take over that woody thing in the palate that was making the nose start to, to disintegrate a little. But with the addition of water, that nose is all come back together. But it's come back together with the fruitier notes turned down a little. The cereal notes and woody notes turned up a little, so it makes for a better balance on the nose for me. I keep saying for me because this is one of these whiskies that could split opinion a little. Yeah, yeah, those woody notes, cereal notes are in that nose now. So it balances out a little that way. It also has a little perfume with it now on the nose. And strangely, the addition of water, it feels less thin on the palate, strangely enough. Feels less thin because it feels more creamy. It doesn't feel like as if it's splitting the same. The flavours are more akin to what you were getting on the nose. There's more of the fruit starting, threads of fruit starting to get pulled through, mixed in with the cereal and the, the and the brininess, brininess is there all the time, playing around at the back of the palate. So yeah, I, I, I actually feel that the addition of water here has improved this. And the, the, the finish is less hot, less peppery, slightly sweeter. So a little water here 
has helped. Mm. Good starter whiskey. Now, I'm going to compare it. It's with this. And it had to be this, didn't it? I was going to review this as part of this series. But that changed. I'll, I'll do a full review on this at some point. Yet again, a whiskey that we... I would imagine most of us know in some shape or form. I would imagine some of us have tried Old Pulteney of some shape or form. Most of us have tried Highland Park of some shape or form. These are two whiskies that were recommended to me very early on. And I had them very early on in my journey. And I would recommend them to people early on in their journey. Because they are good starting places. This was always called or had been called at a time the all-rounder. Highland Park 12 year old. I'm not going to review it here. I wouldn't say it's an all rounder necessarily, but it does have parts of, of lots of things going on. I'm actually going to add, before I even put this to my nose, yet again, haven't tried this comparison. Uh, it, the reason why I've went for Highland Park 12 year old is from memory, this is the second or third bottle I've had of this. From memory, there, there's a there's a brininess, there's etc, etc, but but there's more of a, a smoky thing off the Highland Park, so that could separate these two here. But, you know, this is where I've, I've decided to go with this comparison. So, yeah, fruit, soft, sweet, woody, briny, or Pulteney. You know, they're not just as far apart as I thought. They are apart, but I thought they would have been further apart. There's a slight rubbery note off the, the Highland Park, which I don't really remember. But then I think I find that I'm putting something sweet, soft in there which is bringing out different notes in this that I wouldn't find if I was drinking this on its own. So yeah, there's a, there is a slight rubbery note. There is a slight smokiness. Oh, Pulteney, sweet. Slightly salty, slightly woody. Yeah, the definite rubber, like like a new inner tube of a tire. It's on the palate that they're totally different. Totally different. Dry slightly quicker. Slight sawdust, but fuller bodied much fuller bodied the Highland Park and once I've sipped out I've sipped it the nose and the palate I found that balancing point that I would talk about that that rubber note has come out of it now and the smokiness and the brininess and this have turned up so yeah, initial pass, yeah, there's, there, there's similarities. There are similarities, but the, uh, the Highland Park has a little more heft with it. Let's put it like that. I'm going to wrap this up because I don't know if you can see the fact that the sweat's just running out of here, but it surely is. And... Uh, I, I just, I, I hope to come back next week in slightly cooler times. But for now, I think I'll actually, I'll, I'll wrap Old Pulteney by saying it's a good starting place. I'm trying to think of who really it, it is aimed at because it does start fresh fruity. There is a saltiness to it, slightly. This has been in my cabinet for quite a while. 
because I think like a lot of us, if you don't just keep going on and finishing a bottle, just stay with that bottle, don't open another bottle until you finish that bottle, then what happens? You buy something else, this slips further back in the cabinet. What happens with that bottle that pushed it back? Well, you didn't finish it either. So another bottle goes in front of them and this goes further back in the cabinet. And I don't think I'm alone when I say that that happens. Now, every now and again, and th this is part of the reason why I do this, I do reviews, is because it gives me the opportunity to go back and revisit these and actually take my time over them, figure out what I think of them, and then share that with you. This, as I said, will go back, probably to the back of the cabinet, but it will come forward again and, it, and, I'll, and I'll, I'll go through it eventually. It would be a good one for having guests, Old Pulteney, because it ain't cheap rubbish by any means. It may hang around the budget whiskey end of the shelf, but it doesn't necessarily, it may be a little thin on the palate, but it's still got enough going on that's that's as good as that gets I, I can't I wouldn't be going you know this is rush out and buy this just you know certainly try it somewhere in your journey I would say so before I completely melt thank you all once again for being here much appreciate it thank you very very much to my uh, patrons they, they keep coming and, and I can't thank them enough. If you wish to join my Patreon group, the details are in the description below. Until next time, here's to your good health. Cheers. Hey, thanks for watching my video. Please click and subscribe to be notified of further content.